<laughs> we're going to pretend we're a part of the, uh, the North Korean military marching band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a moment years in the making. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the Whistler Film Festival debut of a documentary set in a place that in so many ways is so far away from here. And that's too, Peter Okay, we got to take a photo here. This group from Vancouver spent months making the movie and years building a relationship with North Korea. I started in 2008, 2009, uh, working there. I had Matt Reichel has made an astonishing 50 trips to the country. I mean, for me personally, it's part of my journey with North Korea. Uh, it's 10 years now, and it's all about trying to close the gap. I mean, literally, the movie's called that. It all led to this. A film crew getting what Reichel describes as unprecedented access to the North Korean team as it headed to an international tournament. The Canadian cameras couldn't stray too far from the rink in the capital of Pyongyang. And the North Korean players didn't stray too far from the party line in the documentary. We are a socialist country, he says, that carries the banner of independence and peaceful, amicable relations. But still, the filmmakers felt they had a level of independence that might seem surprising in a dictatorship notorious for censorship and ruthless control. This was really just us in the sports department and hockey. And, you know, we had a government guy with us for the first two days of shoot. And then they're like, all right, go ahead. Like, you're in the stadium, you're hanging with the players. Go talk about what you want. And I think the players are really good at self-censoring. And when they're on camera, they, they see a big camera with foreigners and they say, oh man, like, I got to talk pretty, pretty party line. But when we're hanging out with them, there's no cameras around, they don't talk about that stuff. That's not to say they negate it. It's just like, for them, they want to talk about their family and their kids and their babies and like what's going on and the new skates and what's going on in the world of hockey. They're hockey players just like people are here. But is there a danger in making North Korea seem just like here? After all, Human Rights Watch describes it as one of the world's most repressive states that uses torture and executions to control its population. I asked Reichel how he'd respond if people felt his film is naive or, even worse, propaganda. People are entitled to their opinion. I would love to talk about all those elements. I've worked in humanitarianism in North Korea. I've worked in education there. I have really close friends in that country. And for me, it's just, it's just a deeply personal journey. There are limits to the access. We don't see the players in their homes, for example. <laughs> but you do get some sense of their personalities. Every time I go back, it's you're just engaging in a deeper level of friendship with them. And for one of the filmmakers, this project drew him closer to his roots. Sonny Ham grew up in Vancouver, but one of his grandparents was from North Korea. He talked about it in this behind-the-scenes video. Being the heritage background that I have is very, <coughs> very uh, eye-opening, and um, it was great to see that there's so much connection through just one sport. To the extent hockey can tell us about a country's culture, the Canadians did see how the game in North Korea reflects decades behind an iron curtain. Their ice hockey or their playing abilities have been sort of frozen in time because a lot of their materials, like the trainings and the skills and the, like the playbooks that they have, is literally passed down from a lot of the, the back in the Soviet Union, like the USSR days. Um, some new materials that they have right now, but they're still trying to understand the fundamentals around the game. That may be the motivation for the North Koreans, getting Canadians to help bring hockey into the modern age. But for Rai Shell, the goal of these trips and this film is to create personal connections between the two countries. How do you help people shift perspective and, and move the debate away from the politics? That's always in the background, and we know that. And I don't want to diminish the politics, but I do want to say, like, there's, there's people here, and we're people, and we can connect over things that are more apolitical and kind of just start to learn about each other and break down those walls. And that has helped inspire Rai Shell's next big thing. And so we were trying to think of how do we kind of create a project that can interact with North Koreans. 
At this Korean restaurant in Vancouver, a group of adventuresome recreational hockey players have come to learn about the Pyongyang Cup next May. Canadian men and women playing alongside North Koreans in a small tournament. Most of your normal travel insurance will not cover North Korea. Rachel doesn't sugarcoat it. This is no ordinary road trip. Because the medical care in North Korea is not fantastic. <laughs> Some people have already signed up. I think it's just because it's North Korea. Like, I've always been interested in it, right? You know, I've always liked hockey. And I think the combination of the two is just going to be sick. We'll see whether that gets lost in translation. But if the Pyongyang Cup goes ahead... I'm pretty jazzed up right now. I've never played ice hockey in DPRK. It appears North Korea is about to get a taste of Canadian hockey culture on and off the ice.